All right, everyone, we are live. We are live. And welcome to the Out of Bounds podcast once again. Glad to have you. And I will be your host today, Coach Sanders. We've got some, uh, excuse me, I'm with my siblings here today. Uh, Four siblings who have created this podcast once again. Four brothers, biological brothers that banter about football all the time in our daily life. So we decided to bring it to you guys and let you interact with us and have some fun. So this is the Out of uh, Out of Bounds podcast, episode three. And today I'm joined with one of my siblings, Atrax. Yo, yo, what up out there, everybody? All the Out of Bounders out there. You know, it's your boy Atrax in the building. You know what I'm saying? We about to give y'all something y'all ain't never seen before, so stay tuned. Appreciate the intro, Coach. Yeah. Okay. That Cowboys thing, man. I, we, we, well, we're going to get into that. So next you up we it. have. You love it. Next up we have the Mammoth representing the Green Bay Packers. Say hello to the fans, sir. The out of bounders, as you called it. Whoa, Mammoth here. What's going on, everyone? Y'all already know what it is, man. Back once again, man. We up in the building. We're going to give y'all that real ish that you love out here, man. We comment our commentary on sports second to none. Sit back, relax, and enjoy what you got going on. Like, comment, subscribe, share that thing. You already know what it is. It's the brothers in the building for the Out of Bounds podcast. Woo! Out of bounders in the building, baby. Let's go. Turn me up. Excellent, excellent. And so, yeah, we just want to re reiterate to y'all that this is something different. This is brothers on here, you know, talking about football. All of us have different experiences and and, and uh, like experiences, and we correlate those together and we bring it together and formulate our opinions about the NFL, our teams, other teams, all that great stuff. Please just come join us and talk football. Uh, so next up we have Black Hayes, Brotherhood Hayes, representing the 49er community. What's going on, everybody? Uh, we back once again. Uh, ain't got too much to say until we get into the mix, but uh, I'm ready to give y'all a wonderful show. So let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. And we also have another guest here. We have our other sibling, Druzy, behind the scenes, helping us out today and doing everything that uh, keeps the channel fresh and going and, and give you great content. So thanks to Druzy representing the Tennessee Titans. And uh, we will move on. <laughs> no, wait, I don't hate the Titans. I ain't got nothing against it. Thank you for AJ Brown. I appreciate it. Uh, so... <laughs> Moving into our hot topics today, the NFL has released the team's opponents. We all know, uh, but there's only two teams that have a somewhat of a schedule. The first game, the season opener, and it's the Green Bay Packers versus the Philadelphia Eagles. And we getting it out the way quick. Boo. We getting Boo. out the way. I'm going. So I get to eliminate the mammoth. From conversations in week one of the NFL. And I can't wait to shut them up. You wish, baby. You wish. <laughs> I want him to come in here and just be like, where do I begin? And that's what I want. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, so, with that, oh, also, it, it, it's, there's a hot topic 1A, 2A, 3A, because this is the first time the season opener has been on a Friday. It's the first time that the season opener has been in another country. And it's the first time the season opener has been is made available only by streaming service, Peacock, okay, who is owned by NBC. So and the only way you'll be able to get that legally is to watch it on Peacock with a subscription. So we're going to start with a tracks and please tell us how you feel about the Packers versus the Eagles on a Friday in Brazil on Peacock. Well, I think it's pretty obvious how I feel about it. I ain't watching that crap. 
I'm just going to watch something else. It's Friday, so I might just watch me some Friday Night Smackdown instead. I don't want to watch this crap. It's some mm. bull dookie what they've got putting on my, my Peacock. I'm a Peacock subscriber, and I'm not a fan of this, so I might just cancel my subscription to tell you the truth. But all jokes, all jokes aside, all jokes aside, this is, of course, the the, the NFL, as much as we, we get them flack for, uh, you know, changing the rules and things like that, one thing they do well is is promote globally and, and um, you know, promote their product. So going to Brazil, I mean, that's, that's going to be huge. Like, they're going to probably have to shut that whole country down because it's going to be crazy. Um, now, they, they could have picked two better teams for it. I mean, nobody wants to see either one of these teams unless they're playing the Cowboys. That's the only time anybody watches them. So mm -hmm. I don't understand how it's not the Cowboys in this game. It does. It makes mm -hmm. zero sense that the Cowboys are not in this game. It makes zero sense. But it'll it'll be an enjoyable uh, experience for those who are involved in it because it won't be me. I'm not watching none of it. Well, you're a liar. You're going to be watching it because um, you love football and you hey, want to see. Hey. The Look, I hope it. I hope it ends in a tie. That's what I. That's the last part I'll say. That's possible. Don't think it'll happen. Um, and I also think you're right. Uh, I don't like it. And if they were looking for, if it, viewership is the thing that they were looking for, then they, they probably should have made it the Cowboys against somebody because they're the most popular team in the country and outside of the country for that matter. So. And also to your point about them doing a really good job about uh, promoting outside, you know, or internationally rather. I remember when they used to have NFL Europe uh, and, and that was kind of big. They used to show those NFL Europe games and they also had them on Madden, you know, and you could play with those uh, NFL Europe teams. And I thought that was going to last for quite some time. I don't know what happened uh, with that situation. So uh, good take on the uh, hot topic. Could have gave us some more, you know. You don't have to be so biased. It's okay to like you. Um, we're going to save the mammoth for last since he's representing the Packers. And we're going to go ahead to Brotherhood Hayes. Please tell us how you feel about these three firsts that are happening on an NFL opener. Okay, so first of all, I want to say that I'm, I'm – Happy to see the game. I'm interested in seeing the Packers against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles because I think it's going to be a good game. I think these are, like I've said last week, I think it was, these are going to be two of the top teams in the NFC. So this is going to be a big game. That's pretty much the only thing I like about it, though, because e you bringing up NFL Europe, I'm glad you did that. I completely forgot about your NFL Europe, and it makes me not like this even more. Just have NFL Europe. If you want to branch your international, you know, viewership or whatever out further, then cool. Do NFL Europe. You don't have to bring the NFL to Europe in this fashion, especially on a Friday. You've got a game on a Friday. It's in another country. And you have to have the streaming service to watch. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, and you know, of course, there's going to be ways for people to watch it, which we don't recommend. Um, but I, I just I don't like I'm used to tradition, I, and, and that's the same reason why I don't like college football no more. Is the tradition they're taking away from it? Put the game on Fox or mm -hmm. uh, NBC, uh, or was it NBC or CBS? I can't remember whichever one it was. Put them games mm -hmm. on there, AFC games on one. Uh, the NFC games on Fox. Let us watch the games like that. Let, let, let us have our tradition. And then you want to do your Thursday night games. Cool. You know, we have Sunday night games and Monday night games. But what is this Friday thing, man? Like, what are we doing, man? Like, why are they trying to change the NFL so much? This is what I don't understand. It's like the rules and everything. They're trying to change everything about the NFL. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's like I understand they're trying to gain more fans. But what are you doing to your core fans? Yeah, I agree. Um, 
Uh, you, 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 I agree with what you said there. You just made it. I lost my train of thought on it. Oh, but the changes. And yeah, they are making a lot of changes. Um, what you were alluding to earlier was that the NFC used to be primarily on Fox and the AFC used to be primarily on CBS. And then the Thursday night games were on NBC and then they kind of switched it from NBC to the NFL Network. And then some of the Thursday night games were on Peacock last year. Um, but now they've mixed that up a little bit. So you can catch AFC games on Fox and NFC games on CBS. I don't like that because CBS, in my opinion, is boring. Don't get mad at me, Phil Sims and all you other guys. It's boring. It's lackluster. Fox is exciting. They've got the, the they've got the the uh the graphics. They've got the cool sounds, you know, that if that doesn't get your blood pump, I don't listen. When I used to get up on Sunday mornings at zero five because I couldn't wait to one o'clock to watch an Eagles game, I'm playing NFL music. Boom, 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 and the horns and all that. Because it's tradition, like Dorsey was speaking of, or Blackheads, rather. So, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I don't like it all that much. Hey. How many people are they going? And then it takes away from real fans being able to attend the game. Who's going to go to Brazil to watch the Eagles and the Packers? Hey. Hey, you, you, you don't like it, Coach, talking to you. You don't like it because this is considered an Eagles home game. That's why you don't like it. No, I don't like it because I can't go. I don't like it because I can't go. I'm a fan of my team. I'm a fan of the game, and I can't go. And that makes sense. Like you, just you, like just you, like the Super Bowl. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, you are wearing the Eagles shirt right now. You have an Eagles background. You have Eagles jackets. You have. Eagle, you know, memorabilia. You have all that. How many people in Brazil have that? <laughs> I tell you what they got. They got the the 2023 Super Bowl champion pre- T-shirts that were printed up when we lost to the. <laughs> that's what they have. Yeah. Either them or somebody in Sudan or you know somewhere like that. You know where they send those off to where nobody will ever see them. That's maybe they sent them to Brazil. So those guys will show up in Eagles t-shirt. <laughs> Great take. I appreciate that. We all do. And now we're moving on to the mammoth. I'm sure this is going to be a very hot take. Uh, <laughs> uh, please tell us how you feel about the uh, Green Bay Packers playing the Philadelphia Eagles on a Friday in Brazil on Peacock. Uh, first, I have to address tracks. Uh, the reason why he doesn't want to see the Cowboys in this game is because he knows for a fact the Packers will smack that ass all the way out of the stadium, no matter where we play. But anyway, after I now I address that, I can move on to the real meat and potatoes about this issue right here. So check me out. I love everything about this game, except for the fact that we are playing the Eagles. Now, I give my brother a lot of grief all the time about this game, even when I first found out that we had the Eagles on our schedule. But being mm-hmm. realistic, the last four matchups, the Packers are only 1-1 one, one of those last four matchups. Uh, so, you know, am I a little nervous about this game? You, you got that right. But I think this is a new era with Jordan Love, and I think Jordan Love is going to break that little curse that we had going on uh, versus the Eagles. Uh, with that being said, I do hear your point. Brotherhood Hayes, I hear you. I hear you, man, because it does take away from the core value uh, of the core fan base. Excuse me. The the core fan base of the NFL, it does take something away from them. Um, I do feel them on their expansion, but that's why you have outreach during the offseason, right? You don't really have to make the regular season your outreach program. You know what I'm saying? The NBA is a great example for that. I know we're football here. But the NBA is a great example for that. The NBA doesn't play NBA games internationally. They just do their outreach during the Mm offseason to include these countries to to understand what we have going on in the NBA. Look look what happened. Look Mm -hmm. at the NBA now. It's full of international players. Mm -hmm. You know, just expand your outreach in the offseason. I think it's going to be interesting seeing a game played on Friday night. 
I, I don't know how that's going to impact the players and the travel and everything like that. But well, um, yeah, let me let me jump in there since you said travel real quick, because I was reading up on it and some of the Packers organization were concerned about the trip. They're concerned about the airport. Green Bay is a small market. It's not you know, they don't have a huge international airport, Philly international airport newark is right down the street another international airport then you got laguardia a couple hours down the international airport or jfk rather so they said that they would um <clears throat> it's going to make their flight like 15, 13 to 15 hours or something to that effect and the only other thing they could possibly do is drive two hours to cleveland first and then fly for i think that's an international airport and then fly but either way it's going to take us like nine hours where it's going to take them like 13 plus hours i don't really see the difference i'm not an athlete and with a body that's up in the air and that's trying to heal and get ready and mentally prepared you know and it's week one so i don't think it's that huge of a deal um now if this was like week 10 or 11 so i'd be really pissed about that aspect of it so yeah that's a they did mention that the, one of the it's Mark something He's one of your GMs or representatives. Mark Murphy. <laughs> Mark Murphy. Exactly. He spoke about this. So he said he was a little concerned. You know, right. but other than that, he's excited and he wants to see it. Yeah. So so, you know, with everything I said being said. You already know the Packers are about to beat the shit out of the Eagles. Excuse my language, folks out there. You already know that we're going to bring that smoke. We're going to bring all the energy needed. Stay tuned, baby, because, oh, man, we are sitting here going to count the days until this game because I'm going to give the business on the following day's podcast. How beautiful is that? We follow up the game with our podcast the very next day so you already know it's going to be electric up in here man september mm -hmm. 7th not only is that our brother's birthday that's mm -hmm. not being seen right now but it's going to be a my dear brother coach's doomsday because he's going to have to see me up in here on his day of reckoning baby Woo! go pack go and you already know what we're gonna do man see y'all on peacock on friday baby or september 6th is gonna be electric it's gonna be huge we're gonna see the packers probably win up a margin of 14 or greater hey look man it's gonna be a beautiful day with that being said i ain't got nothing else to say but go pack go baby hey 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 i got something to say because i was mentioned in your soliloquy which was lovely ignorant as usual uh you, you said you said that i don't want to see the I, i'm worried about the packers my team has lost 15 games in the regular season over the past three seasons and they've lost three playoff games in embarrassing fashion over the past three seasons i don't care about them losing because if i did i wouldn't be a fan of the team but let's talk about the facts the facts are green bay it was number one viewership as, as far as week by week the only time green bay was ever in the top 10 by nfl fan viewership was when they played the cowboys that was it nobody cares about the packers nobody wants to see the packers they want to see the cowboys we know that they want either you love them or you hate them this ain't this ain't about me being a fan of the cowboys this is a fact okay now as a fan of the cowboys absolutely the green bay packers have stake in the dallas cowboys organization but why do you if if it's such it, why is this such a great pride for green bay packers fans it's it's, it's laughable to me because we own the, the the commanders i don't bring them up we own the giants i don't bring them up why are you constantly every chance you get you bring because up cowboys. cowboys fans make it so unbearable to be around them Man, you whatever. have to hear about this crap all the what? time so anytime yeah. that we get a chance to shut up the cowboy fan is a celebration it's not about the team beating the team it's more of having that talking point over an annoying Cowboys fan. Now, but it, you it up until this point wasn't considered one of those, but you're starting to reach that point of an annoying Cowboys fan. Let me tell you something. Oh, he's, he's starting he's to reach that. An I, hate, fan. I hate to see it on you, but I love it because I want you to keep that dumb stuff up. Listen, let me tell you something. That ain't it. Ain't it? Ain't about shutting Cowboys fans up because y'all don't shut us up. We still be talking. So what are you talking about? We still them boys. We st this is still our year. You're not going to stop that. So it ain't got nothing to do with that. 
It's the fact that you, like I mentioned, the fact that nobody cares about the Green Bay Packers, it's a way for y'all to stay attached to what's relevant and what's always popular. That's the <laughs> only thing it is. That's all y'all are doing it for. You have zero, no reason to bring up Green Bay beating the pack, uh, the, uh, the, the Cowboys right now. The only reason is because Cowboys are relevant all the time, even when they're losing. They're still the most talked about team. They're still the most viewed team. And the Packers will never get there. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> mm. Those are strong words. I agree. But those are, unfortunately, uh, Jerry Jones sucks as a GM, but as a as, as a promoter or did he go to college for advertising? And he, like whatever. I, he, I don't know. I'm not sure what he went to college for. I know he was on a scholarship for football, but then he stopped playing football. So I don't know. Uh, but he's always been a marketing. Is, marketing is what I'm marketing is what I meant to say. But it, it, he's got a great marketing team. He's had a great uh, plan for what he wanted to do with that organization. I'm sad to sit here and say that or even give him those kind of props because he does catch a lot of flack. Uh, but as far as a business is concerned, I don't think there's a better model to follow. For a motherfucker who ain't did nothing in 30 years and is still considered the best, still considered the most popular, still considered the greatest, like that shit is absolutely ridiculous to me. I don't uh, think anybody uh, considers them the best or the greatest, but they are the most popular. That's that definitely. you can't deny that. I, I, I mean, heard you know, anybody I'm, I'm, say they were the greatest. Well, that's because you're a Cowboys fan. I'm who's an called, Eagles fan talking talking to other who's called them all the greatest. You know, you know somebody who's actually said the Cowboys are the greatest. I mean, no, not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not yesterday. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yes, yes. Uh, all you gotta do is read some comments on uh, on whatever media, you know, social media site you're on. So, uh, yeah, I agree. My, now, my take on this game. I said a little bit of it before. I don't like it being in Brazil. I'm not. I don't care about it being Friday, and I don't particularly care for it being on a streaming service that you have to pay for. It's just turned a fun, great game that we love into a monopoly, you know, where they're trying to suck every dollar out of you, you know, especially for somebody who goes to games, multiple games in a year. Uh, uh, paraphern- I mean, my dog has jersey. You understand what I'm saying? I get, with Black, uh, Brotherhood Hayes touched on it before, but jerseys and hoodies don't even begin to go into the financial support that I have thrown into the Philadelphia Eagles. And every year when they had the Super Bowl, people like us can't afford to go. I can't afford a five today. Now, tomorrow that may change, but I can't afford a $5,000 ticket for me. And I have to take my fiance because she's a new Eagles fan. That's $10,000. Then we have to stay somewhere for three days. Then we have to eat for three days. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, and I'm very upset with the NFL about that. A bunch of people who are, are are celebrities just to get to dress up and go to a game that they don't give a damn about just so they can be seen and say they were at the Super Bowl. You, you, you support your team all year, all year as a rabid fanatic. Fan, that's what fan means, fanatic, to, to watch them go play the biggest game in their life and you can't attend, you can't be there. That just sucks. Even for season ticket holders, you know what I mean? Like, they might get a little bit of a – I don't know how that even works. I, I have a, a buddy who's a season ticket holder, but they are Commanders fans, so there's no need in asking him what's that one. <laughs> Super Bowl invite. Fuck the Commanders. <laughs> Fuck the Cowboys. <laughs> and the Giants. Um, the Packers, I don't hate them. I don't hate them. I hate Aaron Rodgers. I touched on that a, a, before about the little – Discount double check stealing. Um, I think it'll be a good game. I think uh, Jordan Love is going to be a really, really solid quarterback in this league. He's a big guy, long arm, long passes. I don't think they're going to win. Uh, I did talk to one of our other siblings behind the scenes, and we were kind of in agreement that we don't understand where all this hype about the Packers being a top team in the NFC is coming from. 
I'll say that again. We don't understand where all this talk about the Packers being a top ten top team in the NFC is coming from. Can can now, I answer that question? Sure. It's because they beat the hell out the Cowboys. That's why. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I'm I'm going to say that Josh Jacobs thing is huge. Huge. I've always been a a, a person that says if you have a strong. I'm old school. Running back, offensive line, running back, running game. If you can get that started, everything moves around that. You don't start with a passing game because guess what? You can't run the ball after you didn't try to. They didn't stuffed your passes all day. Now you're trying to run the ball. Like, come on, that's whack. You gotta. They gotta get away from the analytics in the NFL. And I'm going off topic a little bit. I predict that the Eagles will win this game. I predict that you know. Uh, it'll be a little much for them, uh, first game of the season. But I think it'll be a great learning experience. I don't think they're going to have a bad season or anything like that. I'm just wondering why everybody's predicting them to be so high. And I'm not even really predicting the Eagles to be that high, but, well, yeah, no, I am. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, big. Uh, <laughs> Mammoth is going to be pretty pissed off on that Saturday. Uh, he might not even show up, depending if things go the way I think it will. He might not even show up for the pack podcast, ladies and gentlemen. So I apologize for him ahead of time. For his you better hope Jalen Hurts can hold on to that football there, buddy. Because one thing has been proven, the Packers can capitalize over turnovers like no other team. So you better hope Jalen Hurts holds on to that football is all I'm going to say. He better hope he's been doing drills all offseason on how to hold on to the football more and not be a turnover machine, a turnover specialist, Ooh. as I should say. Hey. Hey, I agree. listen, I I got listen, Mammoth, spot on. Okay, I got my feelings a little bit when he brought up my Cowboys, but he's right. The Packers is going to win that game, and they're going to win it convincingly. Oh, you shut the hell up! Your time is <laughs> over. You you've already extended your couple minutes, sir. Hey, hey, listen, when you was talking about not being able to go to, to, the, to the game, all I was thinking of is cry, Eagles, cry. That's all <laughs> I could think about because I was just like, I felt so sad for you. It really touched my heart how, you know, you was just, you, I mean, we really need to start a GoFundMe so you can get to, to get to that game to see the Eagles get beat by 21 points. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> okay. I can't, packers, remember the packers, last time. I can't even remember the last time we lost a, a, a season opener game, but okay. I looked that up. Hold on. Let me see. Last time we lost a week one game. Let's say that. Three years ago? Four? It's probably one of uh, Carson. Shout out, shout Carson out, shout out to the out of bounders interacting in the chat right now. We got your fiance saying, "Oh my, such hatred towards Jalen." It's not hatred, hey, but uh, Vanessa, check it out. It's not hatred. My no, sister. he's right. It's boo. not hatred. Right, it's calling boo. facts, baby. It's calling facts. <laughs> he got to get better. Well, and I've told you this, uh, boo. Uh, he's got to get better. He's got to be better with the ball, and I think that comes from the. You know, there was a lot of games where they were just streaking receivers down the field, especially in those last few games and, and the playoffs against the Bucs. And he, it's like they were coaching him not to run, you know, and coaching him to just throw first. And when you have a dual-threat quarterback, you've got to use the dual abilities or there's no threat. Just throwing's not a threat. Just running is not a threat. You have to use both. And it seemed like he was being coached not to do that because he would just run to the sideline to see if anybody's open and they're not open and throw it out of bounds. Three drives in a row. I mean, three times in a row, three downs in a row, two, three drives in a row. So he's right. Uh, when he wasn't doing that, he was turning the ball over. So uh, he has to get that fixed. I think he can. I hope he can. I think he will <laughs> before that game. And uh, he doesn't do it every – he didn't do it every game, but when he did it, it was costly. And anytime a turnover happens, it's costly. So, so we got I some more. We'll... We got uh, our dear brother, Juzy, saying Eagles 21-17, locking in. 
And then we got uh, Vanessa commenting back. She said, I know, I just don't like people talking about my birds. Look, hey, it's gonna happen. That, you know, we gotta speak facts from facts. We, we gotta talk about football and we gotta do it with facts, okay? We can't that, just do it with our bias. <laughs> that boy Drew is a damn contrarian. That's all he is. He's seen that it was two people that said the Packers, so he had to come in there talking about some Eagles. No, no, no. <laughs> I just said we had a conversation prior and we are in agreement. He's smart, man. He's the smartest one in here. <laughs> All right, that was pretty good. I, I wish I had more excitement for y'all on the Eagles uh, about this game, so I apologize. It's just, you know, it's hey. so far away, and I, we just – I'm waiting for more stuff to see. You know, let's get to some training camp. You know what I mean? Uh, let's get to – and maybe we can live stream from there too one time, you know, because I might actually – that's one thing I don't do. The Eagles have a huge, you know, opening training camp and do all that stuff. I'm sure all y'all teams do too. So, you know, we can try to get this. Important mm -hmm. information: uh, the Eagles have not lost Week One since 2020 at Washington. Jalen Hurts has never lost a Week One start. Hey, it's the first time for everything. This game is the is the first. So, the first? first time for everything. Hey, the Jets got us. It took them 13 times, but they got us. Last yep. year. So, yep. That was the first time they ever beat the Eagles in 13 tries. They got it. So, I mean, anything can happen. So, all right. And I might have something more for that later just because I'm, you know, such a rabid Eagle. I'm trying not to show my bias, you know, but at the same time, I don't see the Packers winning that game. And to be quite honest, I'm going to go even further. I don't see us losing a lot of games, period, this year. I don't see three or four losses on our schedule. And it, we might shock the fucking world this year in 16-1. Hey, hey, you ain't see three or four <laughs> losses last year either. No, you I ain't see three or four losses either last year either. You was Mr. We undefeated. My team's undefeated. And then they crumbled. They did. They did. I, hey, look, that's an anomaly. We've never seen that before. That's why I don't think we'll see it again. And I must iterate. Some teams would be clamoring for 11 wins. To have 11 wins and to be considered a bad season is a good thing going into the next season where we're not just like, you know, totally despondent and, 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 and like years in the past. But, so. but context, context is very important. Y'all was, it wasn't a bad season because y'all had 11 wins. It was a bad season because the way you ended your season. That's why it was a bad season. Right. We ended it with a play. We ended it with a playoff loss, a very bad playoff loss. Well, yeah, we're also skipping what happened because y'all were the Super Bowl favorite going into the season. And then you lost what five of your last six games? Yeah, that's not good. Nobody's ever going to tell you that that's no, a good No, we weren't thing. the Super Bowl. The 49ers were the Super Bowl favorite going into the season. No, no. They no, they were not. Higher. No, they were not. No, the they were not. They had them higher. They had, the them, higher. They had them higher than us. No, they did not. The 49ers were not the favorite until they put 40 some points on y'all. That's when right. they became. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the beginning of the season. At the beginning Everybody of the season, said the Eagles were the odds Eagles, on favorite. Even in me. The Super Bowl. I Everybody said it myself. Had. The Eagles are yeah, the best. Yeah, you did. I remember that. Hey, you, told, you talked to me about that. Yeah. All right. So, what? Anyway, next we're going <laughs> on to over under. Okay. And this week, over and under is going to pertain to this uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Last year, they had 10 wins, and they had Kenny Pickett. This year, Kenny Pickett is the backup on the Eagles, and their supposed starters, Russell Wilson, and I'm going to put a slash, Justin Fields, because I feel like by the time the season is ending, Fields will be the starter. That's my opinion. Um. Mm -hmm. They won 10 games last year, so we're going to leave it at 10 this year and give us a reason why you think Russell Wilson or Fields will give them more or less, excuse me, over or under 10 wins this year, and we're going to start with A-Track once again. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with over, and I'm going to say Justin Fields is the starter for the majority of the season. I think the only reason – 
Russell Wilson is even going to start to begin with is because of his contract. That's it. Outside of that, I I see if they if there was a fair competition going into training camp, I think Fields would win outright. And I think he's going to mesh better with the team than Russell Wilson. Let me make this very clear about Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is extremely overrated. Extremely overrated. When he was oh, – all his success was off the backs of the other players on the – he played with one of the greatest defenses of all time. He had Marshawn Lynch. He had a crazy receiving core every single year he was in Seattle. And he was throwing 3,200 yards in 20 touchdowns. People acting like he was out there putting up Peyton Manning numbers. He was not doing that. Now, he showed up in, in a lot of key situations – so I give him credit for that. And he was never turnover happy. So I give him credit for those things. But people make it seem like Russell Wilson belongs in that upper echelon of quarterback. And he doesn't. I, for the most part, I like the way he carries himself. But I'm talking about football. And I'm talking about on the field. And I think if you're looking at talent for talent, it's not even a comparison. Justin Fields is way more talented than he is. And I think with him being in with Mike Tomlin and the structure that Mike Tomlin provides to his team, He's going to take off, and I think the Steelers are definitely going to win 11 or 12 games. They're going to be in contention for their division, which is a highly contested division. It's going to be tough, but their defense is getting better. The, they got young receivers that are going to be really good. I, I'm going to go over. I think the, I think they'll win 11 or 12 games with Justin Fields. Hmm. Well, I, okay. So when do you suspect? So you suspect Justin Fields to get the starting job yeah. through preseason and training camp. If if I it's, if it's that I was having difficulties here. If it's if it's uh competition and it's fair, because we know the politics play a role. And like I said, uh, uh Russell Wilson has a contract. They don't want to pay that kind of money to a backup. So there's there's going to be politics involved. Mm-hmm. I know, I know on Russell Wilson's contract, it's not a big contract. He's getting paid from the Broncos $36, 38000000 million, and the Steelers mm -hmm. only signed him for roughly $6 million. It was one year, $6 million, something like low, very low like that. So they're not beholding yeah, to him. The Broncos of the are paying them. Right. Oh, that, yeah. that's fantastic. The Mammoth, is, Mammoth is right. The Broncos are paying a huge, like you said, 30, I think it's 36 Maybe even thirty nine million or something. Yeah, like it's that. like it's like thirty nine. It's way up there. Well, that's mm -hmm. that's even, that's that sounds even better. So, if they go into there, uh, and it's fair and it's one on one, I think Phil's is going to win the starting job, and I think he's going to do fantastic with Pittsburgh. I think I think it's going to be fair because of Mike Tomlin. Now, yeah, there he's going to have to answer to the higher ups, but we, again, we're talking about Mike Tomlin. You know what I mean? Uh, I think he draws that kind of respect. I think uh, he has that much respect for the game that he's going to put the best player on the field and fight for that player, you know, to to get the start. So we'll see. But my prediction is Fields will be the starter by the end of the season. Good take. They tried. All right. Keeping it going the same way. I'm going to go to the Mammoths this time. Give us your take. Oh, excuse us. Are you over or under on the Steelers with 10 wins? Uh, I'm inclined to agree with my bro tracks, man. Uh, I, I believe that they're going to be over. And I do believe that Justin Fields will win that job because with just I, I've been a, a very up close observant of Justin Fields due to the fact that he was in my division. Um He's a really good quarterback, man. And the talent just never met his level of talent in Chicago. And now Pittsburgh has that level of talent that can uplift him to that next step. And I believe that with the coaching there, as well as uh, the, the level of talent, that he can really make that team super competitive when it comes to the playoff picture in the AFC. So I do believe around 11, 12 wins they will be able to accumulate over the season. And I believe they go deep in the playoffs. I, I believe they challenge a lot of teams. And I do believe that they're going to split with the Ravens this next upcoming season because Ooh. of that change at the quarterback position. But, yeah, 
I'm going to have to say over around 11 and 12 wins, and they go deep into a playoff, make a deep playoff push. Hmm. Okay, that's hot because, you know, with those 10 wins they had last year, that put them at third in their division, which means that division is highly competitive. So, hmm. The Browns, who else is in that division? The Ravens? The Bengals, are in that division. Ravens. Yeah. I only said the Browns because they had 11 wins last year. I'm not one of those people that think the Browns are a good team. So let's just get that out there. Uh, but the Ravens, yes. And to have 10 wins in your division and still be third. Whew. I remember a few years ago, I mean, 10 gets you in and basically wins your division. So that's crazy. Uh, yeah, good take. So we're going to go to Brotherhood Hayes before we go to Brotherhood Hayes. I want to say that is, I was giving you some crap earlier about your Chuck Norris background. But what <laughs> you have there right now, sir, I want to say that's an awesome, excellent, beautiful picture. Just move out of the way a little bit so we can see it. So that's out the way. Ooh. Like hey, a that's that's uh Claritho Jenkins. He played with the 49ers for half the season. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and we're gonna give a big shout out to Coach Sanders because he bought that jersey for your boy. Oh, he did, yeah. And that's an yeah. again. Let's go back to official. what we talked about before. Official on the field jersey. All right, nothing, nothing less. I mean, anything less is uncivilized. Uncivilized, right. man. You got to do it. You got to get the official on the field, that blue tag and that on the field tag on your jersey. Not the on field replica when the NFL started doing that. Okay, there was either on field or replicas. Now they have on field replicas. Anyway, that's for the ladies. My, my, my fiance wears that. But any, at any rate, uh, Brotherhood Hayes, give us your uh, thoughts on the Steelers. Going over or under 10 wins with Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Okay, so I agree with everybody. Um, I don't know how much better, but I do believe they are going to be better. At least 11 wins. I'm thinking it's going to be closer to 12 um, with uh, Russell Wilson because um, they had horrible quarterback play last year and they still won 10 games and made the playoff. It is a tough division. So I don't really think that they're going to win the division with the Ravens. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be tough um, with the – I'm looking at the Bengals and the Ravens because I really don't think the Browns are going to replicate what they did last year. I may be wrong. Uh, but, yeah, I think they're going to have 11, and 12, 11 or 12 wins. I strongly disagree with the Justin Fields take that everybody has, though, because uh, <laughs> even though Russell Wilson, I do agree he is overrated. I think that Justin Fields is exponentially more overrated than Russell Wilson is. Russell Wilson is a very good quarterback. Um, and for his career, he has three times more touchdowns than interceptions. He is He does not turn the ball over. He plays pretty very – good football he had one bad year and everybody made it seem like he was the worst quarterback ever like quarterbacks have bad years but he has 334 touchdowns in his career and 106 interceptions that's three times more touchdowns and interceptions justin fields has 54 touchdowns and 68 turnovers okay well here, here oh, don't do that don't do that yeah, to him. yes i am don't do that to him. Do that that's to him. not all his fault man mm. that is not that's not all his fault, man. I understand you want to go off of raw stats, but some things are not on the analytics and stat sheet when it comes to quarterbacks. Justin Fields has so, all the intangibles, but he hasn't had the coaching. He hasn't so had you the can, coaching and the talent. You can say the same thing about that first year in Denver for Russell Wilson because that whole system was crap. And he had a yeah, good I didn't year say last year. Yeah, about Russell on that. So, but, but so that's what I'm saying. But my thing is, Everybody acts like Russell Wilson is a terrible quarterback when he had one bad year. And even his bad year was better than Justin Fields' year ever had. His bad his year bad was better year, than... But his bad year was better than a lot of these other quarterbacks out there. 
Wait, and it was de- definitely better than Justin Fields. You're you're engaging <laughs> so in some hyperbole, thing. though. You're engaging in some hyperbole. Who's saying he's a terrible quarterback? Look at how they talked about. Look at what just happened to this man. Like I'm talking, I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about if you look at the league, the way that they were talking about uh, 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 Russell Wilson the past few years, they act like he was just horrible. Last no. year, yes, they, that's how they did. No, they didn't. They start they start rating him properly when everything's not in his favor. Name me a name me a, a receiver that Justin Fields had that you think is a great receiver ever in his career. He's on. Uh, I, well, DJ, I think DJ, DJ Moore went there last year. Yes, DJ, DJ Moore yeah, went DJ there. Moore. Exactly. Yeah. DJ Moore went there last year. Now, go down the laundry list of receivers that Russell Wilson has had in his career. Not to yeah. mention, he's played with the number one defense supporting him for his whole career in Seattle. Yes. And and, and what I will also go down also, to also his coaching. Stats. Coaching, yes, the yeah, coaching you're right. Russell Wilson had far better than anything Justin Fields has ever seen. Which brings me to my point: Justin Fields and Russell Wilson are going to have the same coach. So how is Justin Justin Fields have a better advantage than Russell Wilson? They got the same coach. Because, <laughs> because he has more talent. Justin Fields. Because Justin Fields has more talent. <laughs> Russell, Russell okay, Wilson so. has proven his talent. Justin Fields. Y'all, you're going off potential of what no, Justin Fields uh, can do. Russell, potential. Russell Wilson has proven he can succeed in optimal situation. That's what he's proven. He has not proven his talent is more. That's measurable. You can measure their talent. Nobody's going to tell you who who has two eyes is going to tell you that Russell Wilson has more talent than Justin Fields. But he does have a better resume because he was in a better situation. So again. You're just proving my point because they're both in the same situation. So how do you believe Justin Fields is going to come out better than Russell Wilson? They're both going to be in a good situation. So why do you, someone who has proven it year after year, Russell Wilson has 40 touchdowns and 13 interceptions in a season. He's done that. Justin Fields I'll, has not done that. The most I'll, tell you why, Fields, I'll tell you why my viewpoint. I'll tell you why my viewpoint because I believe Justin Fields is hungrier. Whether whether Russell Wilson does good or bad, he's getting 39 M&Ms this year regardless. Justin Fields still got to prove himself to get a contract like that. You know what I'm saying? And he has to prove that with his, what I believe is his future organization because that's why they only signed Russell Wilson to a one-year deal. If Russell Wilson is what we say he is and he's this ultra super good quarterback or any of that kind of stuff like that to that nature, the Steelers would have signed this man to a – three-year, four-year long contract. They wouldn't even went and got Justin Fields. Why do you get Justin Fields if you believe Russell Wilson is your future? Because they don't believe that. They signed him to a one-year deal and went and got their future QB because they see the same things that me and Trax are talking about. They see Russell, what is coming. They see what Russell they can Wilson mold this man 35 into. 35 years old. Right, that's, that's what I was going to say. What, what, that's what's that's, his that's why he's not the future. He's 35. I'm not saying, right. listen, listen. In the future, I agree. Justin Fields is the future, but right now, I, Russell Wilson is the quarterback. I, I don't see Justin Fields. Russell Wilson would have to have a, a even worse season than he had two years ago for them to have to bench him to put Justin Fields in. Yeah, I even though I do see Fields being a starter at by the end of the year, that's just record wise, but. Uh, like you said, uh, uh, Mammoth's him being hungry or something. Like that. I, I think with Russell Wilson, knowing he got he reminds me of the Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers type, where this young boy is on my heels and I got to do everything to make sure, and Carson Wentz to make sure he don't get on the field. And I think that's going to step his game up to another level, good or bad, you know. When you start trying to force things, and, and I, I don't know, but that's a good point. That's a good point. I think I think I think Russell is going to be inspired by the fact that he's got this young gun on his heels, and he doesn't feel like he's out of his prime yet, and he wants to stay and you know get that limelight. So I think he's going to go put everything out there. Hopefully, it's good. I mean, we've seen him, and most times versus not, he's been successful. 
doing that. So, hey, uh, that's hey, a, that's, hey, that's uh, a very, that's a very good real point. Quick, hey, real quick, out of bounders that are watching this, that are tuning in, we appreciate your interaction. Hey, tell me, tell us what y'all think about this this topic right now. Justin Fields or Russell Wilson? Who would you rather have right here, right now as your QB1? Comment down below if you're watching this video later. But if you're watching it with us right now, let's see it in the chat. Let's see it in the chat. Let's see it in the chat. Put it in the chat. What you guys think about this right now? Justin Fields or Russell Wilson as your QB1 heading into the season? Not later on in the season, not mid-season, right now. Who's your QB1? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Put it in the comments if you're watching this later. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, thank I'll, you for that, man. And, and I need to just hold on. Let me say this because I forgot to say it in the intros, and I'm going to make sure I do it next week, and you guys got to get on me. We need your guys' subscriptions. We need your likes. Yes, we need your comments, and we need your notifications. Now, someone asked me, how much do your subscriptions cost? They're free. It don't cost anything. There's no monetization here we're not asking for gifts we're not asking for handouts and we don't charge anything for the subscription it's free just click it do us a favor so more people can see us and then we can have more topics and more guests and more great content just subscribe all you gotta do is hit the button it don't take much millisecond subscribe that's it okay so, so we got some pouring in we got uh, Druzy with Rush for Shore. Fields is too run dependent. We got Vanessa with Justin Fields. And we got Sarah. I would rather just have pizza. Sarah just <laughs> wants pizza. She don't want no QB. <laughs> uh, I wish I could have pizza too, Sarah. I, I really, really <laughs> wish I could eat some pizza tonight. I've been dreaming about pizza for two, three days. So, a lady walked by me the other day with a triple meat pizza. And I knew it was triple meat because I can smell it. <laughs> Hey, there's a there's another quarterback that I heard was too run dependent. His name's Lamar Jackson. Anybody heard mm. of him? It's Ooh. not it's not a bad idea to be too too run dependent sometimes. We're talking about regular season success and who's going to carry this team to where they need to go. And it's clearly Justin Fields in my mind. If we're looking, QBR is a stat that breaks down all positive and all negative plays. Okay, two years from ago, from zero to hundred, from zero to hundred. Neither one of these guys for the last two years have had great QBRs. However, two years ago, Justin Fields was 56, while Russell Wilson's was 38. Okay, Ooh. last year, Russell Wilson's was 54. Justin Fields was 46. Okay, mm. we all know of the debacle of what happened with the Chicago Bears last season. So even with worse coaching, worse teammates, he still had comparable QBR to Russell Wilson, who's a proven commodity in the NFL. I just think that you, you sometimes we get caught up in this in too much in the pass versus touchdown stats. I mean, uh, uh, touchdowns versus interception stats. Now we get too caught up in that. Sometimes it's about making plays, and Justin Fields makes those plays. Russell Wilson. If if you would have took a better quarterback with that the Seahawks team, they would have probably won more than one Super Bowl. Russell Wilson is a well, they would have won two if the coach wasn't a dumbass. The well, that, was, he he was that, was, that was that was dumb too. But yeah. the coach was trying to do he was trying because people were saying Russell Wilson's a game manager, and what I believe is the coach was trying to give him that uh that Super Bowl mm -hmm. MVP to kind of prop him up to where he's in that status because he seems like a very likable guy. You know what I'm saying? So Well, well, why... let me jump in there. Let me jump in there because I agree with you that the coach was trying to give it to Russell Wilson and make him MVP. It was dumb as shit. And I play Manning in a zone on the goal line just hoping you're dumb enough to do what Pete Carroll did. And you know what? It paid off sometimes. Dorsey's seen it once. It pays off. You, it pays off. So that was dumb as shit. You run the ball. And then here we go back to that analytics and all that other. Run the ball. You'd have two Super Bowl trophies if you'd have ran the ball from, like, what was it, the two-yard line with Marshawn Lynch. And you dropping back to throw. So, so Drew says that he cannot, Justin Fields struggles 
reading defenses and going through progressions, which is why it's bad for him to be too run dependent because he cannot that, read defenses and go through progressions. That's the same thing they said. That's the, literally the same things they were saying about Lamar Jackson. You know what the difference was? And Lamar Jackson and Justin Fields was Lamar Jackson had good coaching. That's about coaching. You don't just okay, show so up in the NFL knowing how to read defenses. Nobody does that. That's why they sit guys down for years so mm -hmm. they can develop that. So allow so him to develop. And we keep talking about coaching. Why is nobody talking about the fact that Broncos had three coaches in the past two years? Very, why are we very, talking like the, like the Broncos were in this ideal situation? That's a fair point. So they had so that's two. True. That's, a fair, that's a fair point coming from Bronco land. But when you're talking about Seattle land, what's the excuse? Well, there is no excuse. He won. He went to two Super Bowls in Seattle. He was successful what in Seattle. What happened the rest of that time? What happened the rest of that time? Once that defense what, went what? away, what, when that, once that defense went away, once that rushing game went away, what happened to Russell? He's still playing good. Why, what, what do you mean? He Russell still had, had one he, bad he had season one bad in his year. whole Bro. career. No, no. <laughs> nobody, nobody gets rid of quarterbacks that are playing good. I, if Seattle felt like he was playing good, you really think they was just going to let him walk? No. They're not because it's beyond the, so, the raw. So Tom stat. Brady was playing bad when he left the Patriots? Man, he was 48 years old. What are you talking about? <laughs> He was a, he's, he not, was a he's, he's not, he's not 48, 48 right, he, he's not 48 right now. <laughs> I know that was, that was I was obviously being facetious. But, Come on but, now. You but know my point doing. is Peyton, Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning left the Broncos. He had a bad neck. They he was they were they betted the against Colts. him because of his yeah, bad the neck. Colts. The Colts, my bad. And, and he showed up in the Broncos and played really well and helped them get a Super Bowl. How, what, what he I'm, what sucked point. that whole fucking season. He had, he was leading the league in interceptions halfway through the season. What? And he sat down. When, when and he didn't play. Super he Bowl. didn't play great. He didn't play great in the Super Bowl either. Him and he Cam Newton's numbers were. He, he never he had, played great. They were in the Super almost Bowl. identical. It was those defenses that was controlling exactly. that game. The same thing with Russell Wilson. The Hold reason up. the boom Hold got up. him there. Hold up. Yes, Hold but up. he didn't Peyton play Manning. bad. It's not the same thing. Peyton Manning set an NFL record for passing touchdowns with the Denver Broncos. You do realize no, that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The first year he was there. You're right. Yeah, the first okay. year. That's what but I'm then the about. second year. So, okay. This, yeah, the second year, he was leading the league in interceptions halfway through the season. He had 18 interceptions in, in eight games. <laughs> and then they sat him. <laughs> mm. And then, like Benji said, he played terrible in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm yeah, not saying first, Russell Wilson is that bad, first year he but I'm not saying that touchdowns he touchdowns or something like that. Yeah, I'm not saying Russell Wilson is bad, but I'm not saying he's no leads beyond Justin Fields. Yeah, that's I what I'm saying. I don't see how you could not see he's leads beyond Justin Fields. I, I mean, I don't understand it, but because I, mean, I had to, I had to watch Justin Fields for the whole time of his career thus far, four or five years thus far. You know what I'm saying? I already see, I see what the hell he got going on, and he is a good quarterback. He's really good. He's just in a terrible situation all across the board. You tell me, you give me Russell Wilson and put him in that same Chicago Bears situation from the jump of his career, probably going to have a fuck the, uh, the same outcome. He's probably going to have the same outcome as Justin Fields. Well, probably. Because that team They're was probably just abysmal. From it, top down, it probably been yes. worse because Russell Wilson yes, can't like run like Justin Fields. Well, when he first came in the league, he was known he's as a, a scrambler. He's, he's a scrambler, yes. but he's not a runner. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Mike mm -hmm. Vick is a runner. Tony Romo is a scrambler. There's a mm -hmm. difference. Definitely was a scrambler. He definitely Brett, was. Brett Favre is a scrambler. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying? there's a difference. Lamar Jackson is a runner. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's a difference between a scrambler and a runner. Uh, Russell Wilson was never a runner. He was always a scrambler. He was very elusive. He was very smart with his de decision making when he decided to run, and he always would slide and get down so he wouldn't get hit. So he was. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't think any of us in here are saying Russell Wilson is a terrible quarterback. I think obviously, if you're measuring them right now, Russell Wilson is the better quarterback. Like that's, that's pretty all obvious. I'm saying. But, but we we also could say that 
Let's think about some examples in history. When Patrick Mahomes was sitting behind Alex Smith, at that point in their career, Alex Smith was the better quarterback. Patrick yeah. Mahomes had not done a damn thing. So yes. they st what, what made them go with Patrick Mahomes? His talent, his ceiling was higher than Alex yeah. Smith. Alex Smith was not a bad quarterback. He was a solid quarterback that you can win games with, and they did. Mm -hmm. They won a lot of games. They were in championship games with him. But the fact is they knew to unlock the team, they had to take the chance, go with a guy who has a higher ceiling and more potential. That's what the Steelers have to do. They got to go with the – they got to take the chance. We see what the NFL is. Cowboys ain't won a, a, a thing in 30 years. Sometimes you got to take a chance. Tony Romo helped get them out of obscurity. You know what I'm saying? That the Prescott Packers had, taking that chance history. with Jordan Love. The Packers taking that chance with Jordan Love. Aaron Rodgers can still play, but you take that chance. And guess what? Huh. Looks like it's paying off. <laughs> yeah, and Jordan Love got to sit. And I think Justin Fields needs to sit. And if Justin Fields plays right now, my over and under changes. They do, they do not make 10 games. If well, Russell the thing, Wilson the plays though, right if now, Justin Fields they came, win he's already games. a four year he's already a four year quarterback. He's already a four year starting quarterback. So yeah, your red shirt your red shirt sitting on the bench days is over. After this yeah. season, you're gonna be relegated to a backup if you yeah, don't if you get out there and put if they sit that man right now, they're going to lose him. He's not coming back from that. And unless you go somewhere that uh, the organization has been blown up and they don't have nothing, then your resurgence can begin. And, and that, right that's now, if he don't get on that field this year with Russell Wilson, Justin Fields is a backup from here on out. Now, we spent a lot of time on that, gentlemen. So I'm going to usher us into the next topic. So. The Out of Bounders can get all the great content that we have in the score. We got two more to go, and we're not going to hold you guys up too much longer. But uh, this has been great. I'm enjoying it. Uh, now it's going to get a little spicy. <laughs> what team on your schedule are you excited for the most and why? Okay. And we're going to start with Brother. You have the floor, sir. What team on your schedule are you excited for? And it could be in your division or you know, or or just a team you're gonna play one time. It could be AFC team, NFC team, but which one gets you the most excited and please tell us why. Um it's definitely not a NFC West team because we just been running through the NFC West. So um I probably would have to say we got it. We got a lot of teams I would like to see. Um, like we play the Lions, that'll be a good game. The Chiefs, that's going to be a good game. Um, the Jets, because I want to see what Aaron Rodgers and them are going to do. But I think the game that I want to look at the most is uh, the Bills, because I really want to see what everybody else sees in uh, Josh Allen, and especially after him losing his number one receiver. I just really want to see what he's capable of. Um, mm -hmm. I really wish that they had the, you know, uh, the schedule already set so I can know how far in the season what it will be. Cause if it's like week 10, I'm mm -hmm. already going to know what it looks like. So it really won't matter. But at this point, uh, since we don't have a schedule set, I think the bills game is the one I'm looking at the most uh, right now. And we're going to Buffalo. So, uh, yeah, I think that'll be an interesting game. Yeah, that could be bad for y'all if it's if it's you know December. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> November. Definitely. Shit. I mean, who who the hell wants to play in those kind of temperatures, man? Like, right. and hmm. and historically, okay. San Francisco doesn't do good against running uh, quarterbacks. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. The Bills, Josh Allen. Even without Stefan Gibbs, you're excited to see what what, what that could bring. Oh. Yeah, I just, I, you know, I want to see what it's going to look like. Josh Allen. Yeah, you're okay. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I got to see that last year. And it was, I think we went into overtime. That was one of the big, that was one of mine for last year was the Bills. Because, you know, we had like this gauntlet that they were talking about in six, seven game stretch that we did pretty good in the stretch that we didn't do good in was not the stretch everybody was talking about. 
It was the games that they expected us to win is the ones that we lost. So yeah, that's a good one. I mean, it's it it probably will be exciting. Like I said, it went down to uh, overtime for us, I believe. So, all right. Uh, now we're going to move to Rats and them dirty damn Cowboys. And please tell us who you're excited to see on your schedule and why. Yes, sir. Look, I, I'm a uh, uh, echo with. Uh, Brotherhood Hayes just said, you know, there's nobody in NFC because because we run through the NFC East every year, so I ain't too worried about that. What? Uh, <laughs> no, you no, no. Hey, not hey, the whole hey, NFC don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Don't don't no, you I'm gonna dare interrupt. interrupt. I'm gonna interrupt. And don't interrupt. You interrupt. Don't you interrupt. And interrupt and interrupt. Hey, don't you interrupt when I'm talking. We ain't got time for that. You hush your mouth. Sir, and you wait your turn. But I knew that was going to get you going. That's why I said it. Um, but in a normal, if it, if the Cowboys was a normal team, the obvious choice for me would be Baltimore because that's going to be a nice clash right there. Baltimore uh, is a really strong team. They should have been in the Super Bowl last year, uh, just like the Cowboys should have been in the Super Bowl last year. But uh, whatever that that's, I think that's a a good matchup, but I, I got to go with the 49ers like at San Francisco. Again, they have to perform in this game. They have to, it, it, it can't be like it was last year. That is this. That was disgusting. It was despicable. It was embarrassing Sunday night football for everybody to watch. They got to go in San Francisco, kicking the dough, put their feet up on the couch. F your couch. I'm taking your your wife. I'm taking your sandwiches. You know what I'm saying? Your kid. I'm putting your kids on punishment. That's what they need to do. You know what I'm saying? They got to go up in there and show them 49ers that listen, y'all can't just keep smacking us around. Here, here's a here's the like the uh Mamba brought up them the uh, the Packers smacking the Cowboys in the playoffs last year, which they did. That was extremely embarrassing. And they've been beating us all, all the time. But those games you're usually close. They're usually closed games. The 49ers, those games are completely dominated by the 49ers. Even if you go back a few years ago in the playoffs where the 49ers were up, uh, upstarts at that point and they came into Dallas and won that game, they dominated that game. The score was closer than it than it, the game was. It ended up being 23 to 17, I believe. But that the 40, it was 23 to 10 late in the fourth quarter. And this is when the 49ers had won maybe 10 games that year or something like that. Like, they weren't supposed to do that. So the 49ers have the recipe against the Cowboys. And sometimes you got to beat the team that has a, the recipe against you. When you're talking about the Colts and the Patriots back in the day, you're talking about the Colts versus the Chargers back in the day, which a lot of people don't know. The Chargers were beating the Colts in the playoffs every year until 2006 when the Colts finally got over them. And they got over the Patriots and they won the Super Bowl. So that's where the Cowboys, as a Cowboys fan, that's the game I'm looking at in San Francisco, Santa Clara, wherever dump hole they're playing in now. We need mm -hmm. to go in there and take them boys down once and for all because this is disgusting. This is embarrassing to the Cowboys' legacy. And you, Coach, the Cowboys own the Eagles and you know it. There ain't no goddamn ownership nowhere in here. I don't Nine know what the and fuck four. About. Nine and four. Um, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. That's Dak. That ain't the Eagles and the Cowboys. It's Dak. Dak plays for the Cowboys. He ain't played for no other team. Who did, who did, play, who, who no did he ownage. play those games? That, 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 that's not ownage. That's not ownage. Because all, all I know is we've been splitting for the last two years. That's all I know. Ain't nobody swept nobody. Now, when the brooms start coming back out, then we can start talking about ownage. And the last time the broom was out, it was in our closet. Incorrect. O one, o two, o three, and o four. We swept y'all a few years ago. What are you talking about? The last what, what sweep was, was with to? us sweeping y'all. Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. You talking about Carson Wentz? Yeah, I'm sure. Jalen Hurts played one of those games too. I, I don't remember that. Jalen Hurts. I don't, I don't played remember that. One of those I don't games too. I hey, don't remember the Carson Wentz era. It doesn't no, matter. Jalen Hurts played the second game. It was 37 to 17. Good, sir. I'll pull. I'll yeah, see. Yeah, he was a rookie. So what? He was a rookie. So 
So what? Hey, Dak beat y'all shit. when he was a rookie. Dak beat the Eagles when he was a rookie. I don't care about that. Hey, we own y'all. Nah, ain't no ownership. And we'll see this year because I predict a sweep this year. At, you know that. Of right. y'all niggas. Cut it out. Cut it out. You said, I, you I know. I that, actually you, do. You predicted that last year, too. I, 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 I actually do. And I actually do. And I think it's going to happen. You predicted it Just last stay year, tuned. too. You predicted it last year, too. Oh, well. Predict again. I'm gonna predict it again until it happens. If I have to predict it every year until I'm right, guess what? If I'm 65, I'm right. Listen, I'm a, I'm a real Fuck fan here. Okay, and I that's what I got to say about it. Fuck y'all ownership. Fuck all that. Talk hey. about you. We, y'all hey, own it it and don't own that now. Are you kidding me? How we about own, how about ownership of a of a playoff win? Own that. That oh, would be getting nice. out of the first round of the playoffs. That would be nice. That would be a nice thing, but we ain't talking about that. See, people lose the argument and try to change the subject. We talking about the Cowboys versus the Eagles. No, we ain't talking know, about. No, we ain't talking about the playoffs. I'm the oh, moderator. I change the subject, and you hey. just get on it. So hey, since no. I moderate, I'm about to moderate about how we gonna kick y'all ass, and how do you like that? And don't say y'all gonna win. The question is, how do you like it when we gonna kick your ass? Moderate. I know. Is the last time we played, you was very quiet for for two weeks. Nobody knew about you. They said, hey, did anybody talk to Benji today? Did anybody talk to Coach? Have you heard from him? Did you see him? No, nobody heard from you because this, See, this is standard because the mad. Eagles usually win the first game and then the Cowboys usually win the second game and then that's all they remember is we, it, Skip Bell, we put up all I remember is we put up 30 points. 30 points on the – Shut your know ass up. You is. know we play twice a year, right? I don't know who that we is. We play twice a year, that, right? So you just I don't know that the first game and went to the fact that, that we played twice a year. You're talking about a split. But okay. Listen, and, and we listen. got – I got a – you know, I got a little – it's hot. It's 81 degrees down here. And the beautiful blue skies in North Carolina. So I got a little hot. I'm sorry. I mean, you o- you okay. You okay. When, when you think about that 33 to 13, I, ain't to you. I want you to get hot. When you think about that 33 to 13, get hot. Okay? That ain't I, I No. Uh, 33 to 13 don't make me hot. <laughs> no. 44 to 6 makes me real happy, though. Are you talking about a game from like 2008? Hey, I don't care. I like it. It makes me happy when I think about it. Okay. Okay. So let's think about it. 2009, what happened? I don't know. I can't okay. think that far. I'll, I'll refresh your so memory. Now we're going to move. No, move. no. <laughs> Let me refresh your memory. So, but that's not the, the topic is are we over or under zero? No. 24. Did you say who you, was, you said you was excited to play? You said you was excited to play the 49ers because That's they correct, got your bro. number. Great topic. Uh insight on that topic. Thank you very much. So I think the <laughs> mammoth hasn't gone yet. I think that's yeah. So uh mammoth, please tell us what team is on your schedule that you're excited for and why. Hey, and well, hey, say it's the, the mammoth, Cowboys, so you the mammoth, kick ass. the mammoth just texted me. Hey, look, the man was just texting me and said he wanted me to take his turn. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to stop. <laughs> I'm about to put the mute. You know I got a mute button over here, right? You know that, right? Hey, so so there's there, there was three teams in particular, right? So the Eagles, because like I said, they have owned the Packers. And for some reason, we played them like four years in a row for some reason. And like I said, the Packers only won one of those. So I want to see a prove a medal against that. But it's it's two more teams, man. Um, the Lions, because they are the measure stick in my division right now. Uh, you can't you can't say that they're not. They are. So I need to see. Although we split with them last year, I need to see the Jordan Love era really take a hold of that, because the last two mm-hmm. years we split with them. And uh, one of those years was really a uh, bad taste left in our mouth because they stopped us from going to the playoffs with Aaron Rodgers last season. Um, with that being said, the third team that I'm really looking forward to, and yes, I did turn this to three teams, uh, the Texans, right. <laughs> the ahead. Texans, is, I'm looking forward to Texans because the Texans additions that they made of Stefan Diggs 
Um, their defense is hellacious. I want to say, and also, I, I don't think I mentioned this before, but Jordan Love and CJ Stroud are best friends. They do all of their mm -hmm. off season training together. Every time that there's an off season training that goes on, they're with each other. So, and Justin Fields is in that mix as well. They all train together. Um, I want to see what we can really do against that team because I believe that that will really prove our mettle. But overall, the Eagles are the team because it's the season opener. We haven't beat them in four years. This is going to be the fifth year straight playing them in a regular season. And uh, trying to see what Jordan Love really has to offer in this little unofficial rivalry. But I know they say that you have to beat a team for it to be a rivalry, but they, they're making us play each other almost every year. So they're trying to turn the Eagles and Packers to something. So um, I want to see what Jordan Love holds, like what, what he has in his, in his arsenal for this Eagles team who has a hellacious defense as well. So I, I want to see what he can really do against this Eagles team. So I'm just going to say the Eagles overall, the Lions and the Texans are like a 1B, 1C type of deal. But it's the Eagles overall. What better game than the first game of the season to really show people that, you, that you're that you here. You can make a statement and say that you're here. This is the new era of the Green Bay Packers. So, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. going to say the Eagles. And uh, I look forward to that game a whole lot. Yeah, definitely a statement game. Come out there, beat the Eagles, and say, look, we here. We arrived. We ready for anybody. You know what I'm saying? And the confidence, if they win that game, the confidence builder for those young players on that team would be enormous. That's good. All right, so I'm going to go. And it's not a surprise. It's the Cowboys. <laughs> because I want the opportunity to sweep the Cowboys. I don't give a shit about nobody else. Beat them goddamn Cowboys into the ground. Bury them. Stop wasting and squandering your opportunities, Nick. Stop wasting and squandering your opportunities, Jalen. Stop wasting my time and give me the goddamn sweep. I need it. Yeah, every Eagle fan needs it. The fuck you waiting on? Give us the sweep. This is old school football. I don't get no older than a team that's been in the league since 1933. Give me a seat. Uh, excuse me. I don't mean to interrupt your Just rant. Like the Packers are, God the Packers, the Packers are 1919. Kenobi. I hate you. <laughs> the Packers are 1919, sir. <laughs> One of the oldest. I know, not the oldest. The Arizona Cardinals are the oldest team at 1920. But we got in in 1933. The Packers, the, the Packers are 1919. The Packers are 1919. Oh, no, I looked it up today. It said the Cardinals. Said the Cardinals was the oldest. Well, maybe the oldest without a Super Bowl. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, the but, Packers uh, in 1919. Joseph, no, that, that wasn't a joke. Very serious. I hate everything about them. The way they look, the way they walk, the way they talk, the way they smile, press conferences, uniforms, how it feels stay with fans. I hate you. What a passion. I jokingly say shit to you when you walk by because I want to punch you in the face. Cry, Eagles, cry. So, I don't have anything to cry about because Cowboys fans have had to watch the Eagles play in the Super Bowl. And more times in recent history than they've got to see their own team, especially these millennials. Well, I That's mean, the ones I hate. They're, they're, yeah, hey, thank you for clarifying that because, you know, I'm 39 years old and you know, there's there's a lot of people who are older than 30, you know, and you are older than 30. So you got to see the Cowboys. And Somebody told me the other day I look 28. They met, oh, in, ben they met, in, they met in Benjamin Button years. <laughs> so I'm 98. <laughs> <laughs> I look 98. <laughs> okay. All right. But yeah, hey, look. 
that the the Cowboys Eagles, we all know that's what the NFC East is coming down to. So that's always exciting to see that game, see how the, those two teams play, especially in later in the year. Because the first game is usually, you know, it ain't, it ain't that important. But that second game is usually, usually too weeks. early in the season. And yeah. then they give us the second game 18 weeks after we already play once. Yeah. It's usually later in the season with some stakes on the line. So we know the NFC East is coming down to the Cowboys and the Eagles again. So that that's that second game is definitely going to be one of them games where I'm going to be sweating a little bit. And those games are going to be at least 10 weeks apart. But the last four games are going to be the Redskins, Cowboys, Giants, Redskins. <laughs> Commanders. Excuse me. As usual, because they try to they try to sabotage the Eagles every year and give us four or five of our division games at the end of the season, just hoping one of them trip us up. So when we finally see the Cowboys, one of those losses will put us second in the division. So, yeah, that's my team. It's the Cowboys that I want to see this year. Uh, I want to demolish. I want to abuse. I want to just I, I want to take advantage of opportunities. We had Jalen for both of those games last year, the year prior. Dak missed one, Jalen missed one. So the next year, I'm like, yeah, we gonna get it. We got to get both of them, and we gonna you know head to head. Then disappointing. Uh, I'm just looking for two exciting matchups, not just one. So, all right. Now we're going to move on to out of bounds. The topic of uh, well, excuse me, the subject of this podcast. NFL related, all football related. Uh, we're going to speak about who is out of bounds, not necessarily in the NFL, but football related. So, coaches, teams, players, you know, water boys, whoever you think, owners, management, whoever you think is out of bounds and why. And uh, we're going to start with the Mammoth. Please give us who you feel this week is out of bounds, football related. Well, 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 it's our main man that we spent a lot of discussion on, Russell Wilson, who seems to think that he paved the way for the black quarterback in the NFL. You, sir, are out of bounds, way out of there, Russell Wilson, because let me tell you something, man. How do you think you got your opportunity, buddy? You think you were the first? Now, I get it. You're talking about winning a Super Bowl and going back to a Super Bowl. But you could have phrased it differently. You could have said, hey, in this modern era, in the past 10 years, I paved the way for the black quarterback. But you didn't say that. You said, I paved the way for the black quarterback, and that's in general. So, you know what? You're out of bounds because you are leaving out the first Super Bowl winning black quarterback, Doug Williams. And let's not even just talk about Super Bowls. You're leaving out Steve McNair, Warren Moon. You're leaving out Donovan McNabb, Dante Culpepper. You're leaving out Michael Vick. You're leaving out Cordell Stewart. You're leaving out Randall Cunningham. Randall Cunningham. You're they're leaving out so many black quarterbacks that made the job easier for yourself. And that's terrible, man. You, We can't live in just recent history. If you're going to dive into history, tell the facts. Tell it all, man. Don't leave out any of those guys that I mentioned because they made it easier for you, sir. And up until this point, quite frankly, I've never heard him refer to himself as black. I've never even heard him mention that he's a black quarterback in the NFL or any struggles that are attached to being a black quarterback in the NFL. But now all of a sudden you want to say, now you see guys like Patrick Mahomes doing it, which I think is great. Really, Russell? You, sir, are out of bounds. You're way out of there. Get them out of here, folks. He had unmuted himself. You're muted. <laughs> Good. It's for, uh, the, it's for the best. He's an Eagles fan. It's the best we don't hear him talk. Probably. Probably. 
Uh, I agree. And I agree with like what Shannon Sharp said. I don't call him unk because I'm 50 years old. So I ain't no goddamn unk to me. Uh, but nobody remembers who the second man to walk on the moon was. So you can't be the second person to do something and say you paved the way for somebody like that. Man, actually, and they and, and like we all named quarterbacks right now before him, but we don't even know the names of the ones that really had to suffer in order for the ones that we just named to get in there and play. The ones who really suffered and struggled, we don't know who they are. There's no book. There's no movie. There's no uh, ESPN 60. None of that. We just hey. don't know who they are. He he, na he named one of them, and that's Warren Moon. Because Warren Moon, you remember, he had to go play in uh, Canada. PFL, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He did. He did. All right. Great take. Drewby, Drewby, Drewby in the chat said uh, Justin Fields should get the start just off of Russ' statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's not going to it's not going to garner you fans saying stuff like that. And it also just looks kind of like that with the people that were saying stuff about him in Seattle, it makes them look right. You yeah. know, the whole four parking spaces thing and you got to, you know, you, unapproachable, that kind of thing. I don't know if any of that's true. You, you know, I, I don't. But based off of that kind of statement, seems like you're out of touch. And typically when you're out of touch, you, you're out of touch with people, too, when your thought process is out of touch. So, you, you, yeah. You, you know what that sounds like? It sounds like. Some some lady was in his ear, you know. what I'm saying, stroking his ego, and he took it literally and decided to go on the, on the TV and say this stuff publicly to everybody. Hmm. He, should, he should have just kept that to himself. If somebody was telling him that, he should have just kept it to himself. I'm just speculating here. There ain't no facts behind that. I'm just speculating. Yeah, PR, wife, PR agent. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Okay. All right. So. Now we're going to go ahead to the tracks since you uh, had something to say. Go ahead and chime in and tell us what your out of bounds is. Well, we're, on, we're all going to do. Are we all doing the same? No, we have different out of bounds. We got time. different oh. ones. Cause so I, go I, ahead and give us who, what, why, when, where, how is out of bounds football related to you and why. This, this, is, a, this is a dog on shame. This is a dog on shame. Two of my three out of bounds have been on Cowboys. This is the doggone shame because I got to put another Cowboys on the way out of bounds. I mean, this dude's way out of bounds, man. I'm talking about Mr. Do-It-All, Michael Parsons. This guy is unbelievable. Okay, let me, let me first say this. The man has generational talent. He has exceptional speed and bursts off the line of scrimmage comparable to a Lawrence Taylor. Now, I, that's where the comparison stopped for me because what we know about Lawrence Taylor is he showed up in the biggest games, okay? Michael Parsons got his first sack against the Philadelphia Eagles who, are, who have been our main division rival for the past three years. He got his first sack against them this season, first. The second point is, is that when you look down the line and you see uh, his production in playoff games, it's zero sacks, nothing, not a single one. His excuse is he gets double teamed. Everybody gets double teamed. I don't want to hear that crap. I mean, I literally was seeing Aaron Donald get triple team and still put getting but pushing between those guys and getting to the quarterback. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear about double teams. Did you win or did you lose? Everybody, every great pass rusher gets double teamed. Okay, I digress. Let's get to the why he's out of bounds. This man is lobbying to be the Cowboys kick returner. What? You can't, you're not even great at your own job yet. And you're trying to do somebody else's job? Like, what are you doing? You don't need to do 
anything but rush the quarterback, make plays on defense. Did not see your name called one time against the Green Bay Packers. Not once. Did he even play in that game? I thought, I mean, I thought he was maybe in the Green Bay Packers jersey or something because he definitely wasn't wearing a Cowboys jersey. I ain't see him. And now he's talking about he wants to return kicks. Like, can we be serious here? Like, dude, we got the most, in, this is the most embarrassing loss in playoff history. The most embarrassing loss in playoff history. The first seven seed to win a game. That happened against us. In our crib that we didn't lose in all season. Not only did we lose, we got embarrassed. 48 points. And you did not show up. And you're talking about, I want to return kicks. Is this just a game to you? Is that what this is? Because if it's just a game to you, then we need to go ahead and cut what cut you know cut ties and let him go on and play somewhere else where he can be this happy, fun-loving guy. Because I'm telling you, Cowboys fans were sick of it, man. We're tired of it. We want to see the team be successful. And this is the kind of crap that keeps us from being successful. You ha you have good sack totals in your first three seasons, 13, 13, and 14. Great stat totals. I think there's only maybe two. I got to fact check it, but I think maybe only two or three other guys have started off their season with more uh, career with more sacks. That's amazing. But it's about the moments, just like we were talking about with Russell Wilson. It's about the situations. Where are you in these big games? So your answer to you not getting pressure in these big games is you being a kick returner? That's solving the problem. How about learn some pass rush moves? Because you don't have any. <laughs> you're just fast. And you're, and you're pretty strong for a linebacker. But you don't have any. You don't have any moves. What's his go-to? What's Michael Parsons' go-to move? Stick his arms out. He's just going to run straight forward. That's what he does. I watched every single one of his pass rushes. He runs straight forward. And then he starts getting frustrated when everybody knows he's doing that and they won't let him do it. And then he just turns off. And then he'll go on his podcast and he'll talk about, oh, I got double teamed. Oh, holding. He teamed. complains about that too. I, I got double teamed more than anybody in the league. Great, dude. Fantastic. You still got to win. You think when – Reggie White or Bruce Smith or DeMarcus Ware or Von Miller or any of these guys, when they were pass rushing, the, the, the team just said, oh, just let them through. That's not what they did. They double teamed them. Surely you're not the first guy to ever be double teamed. But your answer to that is, let me kick off, let me return some kicks. And then uh, a side uh, out of bounds to that is the special teams coach Fossil. He says, oh, he would be great at returning kicks. What are we talking about here? <laughs> are we serious? Like, come on, man. We know what this guy's job is. He's supposed to be the generational defender on our defense that changes games and our outcome. What game did he do that in? Name me one game. All you the Michael Parsons lovers out there, name me one game where the Cowboys wasn't already beating the brakes off of somebody where he did, uh, had a great performance and changed the game and the outcome for the Cowboys. You can't find one. He does. There are none. There are none. So that's what he needs to focus on. Michael Parsons, you're way out of bounds, bro. Focus on your skill and your craft, not somebody else's. Then you're taking some somebody else's job. That's the other – you're taking somebody else's job. They already have guys who are battling for kick returner. But since you're Michael Parsons, you can go up there and just take the job from the guy. What are you – like, what are you doing? Like, what are we doing here? This The team is a clown show when they do stuff like this. There's any cut it out. Michael Parsons, you're out of bounds. Jim Fossil, you're kind of out of bounds. Y'all need to get this together, man, for real. All right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's a little weird, but hey, if they want to experiment with it, I'm all for it. So let's see it. <laughs> hey, real let's quick, him. Go ahead. real let's quick go ahead to your point. Him. To your point, tracks where um where you said uh his effort should be learning new moves and all that. Remember when he said on his podcast that football is not his 
only focus. He said that out of his mouth that he's not even like like basically what I surmise from that. What I got from that is, oh, you're basically saying, eh, football, whatever. I'm gonna focus on all these other things I got going on because football is not gonna be my main thing. It's not gonna be my main breadwinner. I got the podcast I could do. I'm trying to get into entertainment fields. You know what I'm saying? He he said it out of his own mouth that football is not his sole focus. Yeah, so like again, I would like to see it. I hope he fumbles on the opening kick against the Eagles. And uh Yeah, I was gonna say I don't want to wish any injury, but I mean, you know, it's he, this is not a person that's that runs with the ball. Those kind of guys trying to go into ball carrying positions tend to give the ball up and get hurt. So I hope they do it. All right. We're going to go to uh, Brotherhood Hayes. And uh, please tell us uh, who, what, when, where, why, how, is out of bounds, football related to you and why. So uh, I'm, I'm going to preface what I'm going to say by saying that in the future, I may end up being the one that's out of bounds by this out of bounds. Uh, but they're going to have to make a believer out of me because uh, the, it, I thought that Tua already signed the contract, but apparently he hasn't signed it yet. It's still in the contract extension uh, talks. But uh, the Dolphins are talking about making him the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. I don't think Tua is a bad quarterback, but I don't think he's a great quarterback either. I don't think I think he's pretty middle to end of the pack. Um, there's a whole bunch of quarterbacks that I take over to it, and um, I don't see why they would feel the need to make him the highest paid quarterback in the NFL, but maybe they see something that I don't, and again, maybe it'll work for them in the future, but uh, I don't see it, so I, I, right now, I think they're out of bounds, uh, and I would like to see um, what all that money is going to do when it's time to re- uh, Resign Tyreek Hill and Waddle and uh, you know all the other guys that make him look as good as he looks. Because like I like to always go back to Purdy. Everybody talks about Purdy's supporting cast, but his he had Tyreek Hill at receiver and Waddle mm -hmm. and a running back that had 18 touchdowns and a thousand yards, and then another running back that had like. 10 or something touching. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, like you, he has a very good supporting guy. So yeah, I think they're out of bounds. <laughs> okay. So yeah, two uh, <laughs> last year at or <laughs> 4,624 <laughs> passing yards uh, while throwing a career high of 29 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. And that doesn't sound bad. That sounds pretty good. Uh, then he, the, the, then he the also have, yard. then he also have like thirteen fumbles too, or something like that. Yes, sir, he did. I get it. Yeah. I, and, and and to your point, I think that those inflated passing yards come from the fact that you had you know wild old Tyreek Hill. But you got to have a good supporting cast. Same thing they was yeah. people say about Jalen Hurts. Oh. It, I read some comments today where they were saying that uh, the team carried Jalen Hurts and Jalen Hurts doesn't carry the team. They, like, I mean, it just, you know, uh, you got to have a what quarterback that went to the Super Bowl, went far in the league and didn't have any help. Like, that's just dumb. They make it seem like it's a dumb thing to have help it's, it's, on a it's, team. It's a team sport. It's yeah. listen, but it's not about having help. It's about having the best help and not producing at a level that you should with that help. When you have exactly. Moster, you have A Chan, you have Hill, you have Waddle. You need I need more than 29 touchdowns from you. I need 40. I need 40 touchdowns and I need less than 50. And he 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 got 14 interceptions, but he only had 29 touchdowns. That, right. That's no, not I, I agree. Get the touchdown done. numbers should be higher. It should be higher. It should be. But I, 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 think, I, think, 
I say that depending on how many rushing touchdowns he got, because I said that same thing about Jalen Hurts a couple years ago, where he twenty something touchdown teams interceptions, almost thirty touchdowns. He, he, he had, but he also had like 10, 15 rushing touchdowns. Yeah, so that took uh, away from some of the shit. But I don't Tua, think though. Two has zero, zero rushing touchdowns and thirteen fumbles. <laughs> zero. Yes, zero. And Tyreek Hill had eighteen hundred receiving yards. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah, almost two thousand. Yeah. And he missed so, two games. Yeah, he missed. Two he games. missed two games. But see, that's kind of where he got exposed because those two games Tyreek Hill did not play. He looked terrible, and that's the problem. Like when you have, see, here's the thing. Here's the difference with Brock Purdy and and Jalen Hurts. To a degree, they have had high level of success with their supporting cast that people say are carrying them. You got to have this success. He doesn't have high level success. Look at what they did in the playoff game. What did he do in the playoff game? Did absolutely nothing. Nothing against a team that you should be familiar with. That's a division rival you just played the previous week where they beat you. For a win to get in, and he played, he didn't play the good in that game either. So now you go to the playoffs and you do the same thing. That I don't want to take, I don't want to tell nobody what they're worth because you're worth what they'll what somebody will pay you. But I can say if I was if I was a general manager, there ain't no way in hell I'm giving to a top contract. I'm not doing it. Well, I mean, I <clears throat> Trying to play devil's advocate here too. Yeah, I really don't feel I can. I mean, the only the only counter argument I really could think of is who would they go to if you know if they right. don't That's him? what I was thinking. Who do they go to? Because you know it's hard to get a quarterback in the NFL, man. Hey, look, forty six hundred yards ain't nothing to sneeze at. I know we asking for more yeah. because he had all these weapons and shit. But the other team has a defense on the field. And 4,600 ain't nothing to see. I would gladly take 4,600 yards from Jalen Hurt right now today. If you sign me up and say you're going to get your 4,600 yards, no more or less, I will sign the motherfucking paper. But you're going to want Stop more than 29. Me a lot. Yeah, say again? You're going to want more than them 29 touchdowns, though. Especially if he's got 14 well, interceptions and 13 Because, because I'm going to get 10 or 15 rushing touchdowns also. Exactly. That was my point. That's all he has is the 29 touchdowns, and then he has 14 right. interceptions and 13 fumbles. So, it you know, th those things matter too. And it's oof. Mm. But I don't even I don't even like looking at his raw stats. This is once again an eye test. We watched him in those high leverage situations crumble. The guy, like the guy, called him a uh, called them break dancers. Mm -hmm. Two is a break dancer. He's a breakdancer. He's a breakdancer. Yep. Like he's not showing up in those high leverage, big moments that takes the team to the next level. And he's not doing it. Well, I take offense to that because I'm an original b boy. I was the breakdancer. It's been on my back. I don't like that. But the, um, the the reason they say it like that is because if somebody's coming to fight you and throw hands on you, you're not going to be right. like, oh, I'm going to yeah, no, no, dance I, it out. <laughs> right, I heard it. Yeah, I heard it when it first came out. It, it was funny. Uh, I don't know, man. Because mm, I don't want to sound like a two hitter because I'm not. I don't know much. I don't just like you know. I don't know much about him. And just like people who don't know much about Jalen Hurts go to the worst uh, things that they could go to. Again, forty six hundred yards, nothing to sneeze at. The twenty nine touchdowns with. You would think you would have more than 30 touchdowns with 4,600 yards. So, yeah, that says a lot. That Those are turnovers. And those sound like those are turnovers in the red zone. Because 4,600 yards is a lot of goddamn yards. You you got you got a guy that has more than 50% of your touchdowns on your team. Tyreek Hill had more than 50% of his passing touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and and yards, and then Almost. at the the running game, I'm looking at the team running stats. 
They had 2,300 rushing yards and 27 rushing touchdowns. That is crazy. Uh, when you're talking uh, about having a, 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 a supporting cast. <laughs> hey, those are good points. I'm going to use those points next time somebody says something about Jalen Hurts and, and his team. Glad you said that. Thank you very much. Jalen, Jalen Hurts has a great supporting cast. He does not have two of supporting cast. <laughs> yeah, I don't two, think... two, of, two of supporting cast is the best supporting cast. If you're a young quarterback and you got that supporting cast, come on, man. That's what you're asking for. And, you got two this... receivers that can take a five-yard drag and go to the house with it. Two. <laughs> Hill and Waddle. Those are two of the fastest receivers in the NFL. You got two of them, and all you give me is 29 touchdowns. I'm not trying to sneeze at 29 touchdowns. That's still a good amount of touchdowns. But compared to the other negative stats, no. You got to give me 40, man. You got to give me 40. And I need to see it consecutively before I start giving you the, the biggest contract in NFL history. Exactly. Yeah, I need, I, need my quarter, I need my quarterback to be north of 30. Well, let's get uh let's get the mammoth in here and um find out. Well no, you you went already, didn't you? Yeah, it's I don't really Yeah. <laughs> well then we can keep we can let it roll because I don't really have an out of a tracks is out of bounds for that damn background. <laughs> hey, look at it. Look at it, beautiful folks. That is lovely. Look at that. I see Ooh. three out of bounds, out of bounds, out of bounds. That's what I see. He's out of bounds. A track is out of damn bounds. That's ladies beautiful. and gentlemen. That's beautiful. See, so, hey, 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 coach. It's you football missed, related. Hey, coach, you missed a great opportunity right here because see, this I know you ain't a real fan. Because if I was you, I'd have said that thing is out of bounds, like Dak Prescott was out of bounds in the first game against the Eagles. Where he was trying to rush and get in the end zone, and he's foot stepped yeah. out. So you could have yeah. said something about that, and you I, didn't. I, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go back and revisit. Okay, but you are out of bounds for that. It's disgusting. I hate it. It's um, beautiful. It's beautiful, and you love it. That's why you commented on it. So yeah, I believe we pretty much covered every topic that we have for today i, I want to go over this like share comment subscribe if you made it this far through the video please understand the subscriptions are absolutely free just hit it it's nothing there's no money we're not asking you for no money yet we all scrape trust us we ain't asking you for a dollar today or a dime we just want a little bit of your time you know so hit the like share subscribe comment and uh let us know what you think. Let us what, know what you like. Let us know what you hate. And we can't wait to see you next week. All right? This has been the Out of Bounds Podcast. Coach Sanders here. The Mammoth here. Hey, let me say something real quick. Let me say something real quick, folks. Out of Bounders. Your Out of Bounder topic. Don't forget, Justin Fields or Russell Wilson down in the comments, let us hear what you got as QB1 starting the season. That's your out of bounders topic. The out of bounders topic, Justin Fields or Russell Wilson starting week one. Who you got, folks? Let us know. Let us know. We're anxious to hear. Hot topic. And um, we have eight tracks. Any final words? All right, got, all right, and then we're going to Brooklyn. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was good. That was good. Listen, you learn. You're learning from the master. Okay, I appreciate that. Uh, listen, we can't say it enough, man. You gotta subscribe. You're out of bounds if you're watching this and you ain't subscribing. Now I know mm. some of you ninjas then watched multiple podcasts and enjoyed it, and you still ain't subscribed. It don't hurt you, okay? Subscribe. And I, I got to also say, Coach Sanders can speak for himself because I need your money. Give me money. I want <laughs> all your money, okay? Thank you. Subscribe. It sounds just like a middle child, doesn't it, y'all? Okay. And um, next, Brotherhood Hayes, give us your final words before we depart, brother. 
Appreciate y'all tuning in every week to rock with us. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. That's all I got to say. All right. Peace out, y'all. This is the Out of Bounds podcast. See y'all next week.